care of a North London local authority. It says the politically correct policies of Islington Council meant staff suspected of abuse were able to escape detection. More than 30 care workers were alleged to have been involved in sexual assaults, child pornography and encouraging child prostitution. But the, but the report says Labour-controlled Islington was paralysed by equal opportunity and race issues. In a moment we'll talk to the report's author and the council leader. But first, James Westhead. Michael Fitch, now 27, has painful memories of his time in the care of Islington Social Services. He claims that from the age of nine he was punched and beaten by staff. When placed in a home outside Islington, he was sexually abused for several years and resorted to self-mutilation when social services refused to investigate his claims. I knew what he wanted me to do. It was fighting, it was terrifying. I mean, I just didn't know what to do at first. And, uh I just sort of try to tell people after that I kept it quiet because nobody wanted to know. The report paints a damning picture of how children at risk like Michael were treated in Islington's residential homes. This couple say their son was sexually abused while in care from the age of four. Lesbians, paedophiles, he was abused by men. Social services knew they have failed not only me, many other children that are in the system today. The report commissioned by Islington itself found no evidence of an organised network of abuse, but its author Ian White found there was an enormous number of ways paedophiles could get access to children. Islington failed to investigate allegations that staff were using children for prostitution, encouraging residents to become rent boys, or involved in sexual and physical abuse, child pornography and selling drugs. This is the 14th investigation or inquiry into Islington Social Services in five years. Altogether, 32 staff have been accused of activities ranging from sexual or physical abuse to supplying children with drugs or pornography. The report is highly critical that no action has been taken against most of the staff. In fact, all but one have gone on to work elsewhere, probably with children. The only remaining staff member, the manager of the Park Place Children's Home, has now been suspended on the recommendation of the report, although 41-year-old Alfred Hurst is not accused of sexual abuse. Another care worker who's now left Islington says during her time there, abuse was widespread. How can you sleep at night when you see young people and children continually abused, physically, mentally, sexually sometimes, emotionally? It's, it's, the whole system really stinks. The report found one reason children were neglected was that some staff were more concerned with equal opportunities and race issues than with protecting children. One of the reasons for this sloppiness is a culture, a dogma of political correctness, where managers claimed that they would um, they feared intervening to get allegations properly investigated and disciplinary action started because they thought they would not be supported. The inquiry was first prompted by an investigation three years ago in the Evening Standard newspaper. The then council leader, Margaret Hodge, today refused to comment. At the time, she dismissed the allegations. I am appalled by the gutter journalism which the Evening Standard has chosen to exploit. Nearly three years on, it is interesting to see that her successor, Alan Clinton, has thanked the Evening Standard for the inquiry and apologised uh, for the state of affairs that we uncovered in Islington. According to the report, Islington Social Services is now well on the mend, but that's little consolation to those like Michael Fitch, who were victims of alleged abuse. And I'm joined now by Ian White, who's Director of Oxfordshire County Council Social Services Department and the author of the report, and by the leader of Islington Council, Alan Clinton. Mr White, you paint a picture of a council dominated by political dogma, by equal opportunities and so forth. How exactly did this prevent the allegations of child abuse coming to the surface? Well, because staff who should have triggered disciplinary investigations and questions told us that they were frightened that if they did that, that they would be penalised by their managers and by the council themselves for being anti-gay, anti-black, or whatever. 
This problem was part of a wider culture, a wider cocktail of problems in Islington at the time. And we describe in the report how at the end of the day there's like a managerial vacuum that didn't encourage open investigation of allegations and, and that's part of the problem. So none of this would have come to the ears of the most senior officers or the councillors themselves? Well, it should have percolated right from the bottom to the top, right to the director and to the chairman of the committee and so on. In fact, we can't track where it finished, but it always fizzled out. Uh, the responsibility lies from top to bottom with Islington at the time. Now, 32 people are implicated in one way or another in this child abuse matter. Where are they now? Well, 31 of them are somewhere else, and that's one of the big issues in this. They may be all innocent, but they were never investigated. If they were involved... Well, when you say somewhere else, do you mean still working they in could child be, care? They could be working in child care in the next door borough, in Oxfordshire, in Newcastle, anywhere. How do I, as a director of social services, know what their history is if my colleagues in Islington didn't investigate them in the first place? That's the biggest problem, it seems to me. They could still be working with children and possibly abusing them. Mr White, for the moment, thank you. Uh, Mr Clinton, do you, do you now accept that what we call political correctness, fairly or otherwise, the political policies of Islington were mistaken and misguided? Uh, I think that's a rather simplistic way to express it. Uh, certainly, we uh, had an equal opportunities policy, which was not properly implemented, and we accept that uh, a great deal went badly wrong in the implementation of the policy, and uh, a great deal needed to be changed in order to uh, uh, put a stop to the kind of distressing uh, outcomes that you've described earlier on. In this I program. mean, you, you were there at the time, you were the council's deputy leader under Margaret Hodge. Did you have any suspicion at all? Did you ever hear any rumours or whispers at all about this not kind of thing? Not in that period, no. Not until the time of the uh, evening standard allegations. We what then began to act following, on, following from that. What guarantees can you give now that something like this will never happen again in Islington? Well, since I've become leader of the council, we've instituted a review of our equal opportunities policies, and there's no excuse now for slippy, sloppy, unprofessional personnel decisions. We're overhauling every aspect of the service itself, and over the past two years, we've been rigorously scrutinizing every nook and cranny, children's homes, social work practice, administrative systems. Lots of people have gone, as we've said, and we've been excellent I new think, team. I think you're reading a statement, Mr. Clinton. Can I, can I just turn back to Mr. White? on this. I mean, you've looked into this matter. Are you satisfied, very briefly, that Islington has cleaned up its act, that this won't happen again? Yes, I've got every confidence in Hannah Miller and her team. They've got some way to go still, but I, I think people in Islington can now be confident that their social services are well on the mend. Mr. White and Mr. Clinton, thank you. Well, other failing to...